Good evening, good evening, good evening, hi, Braino. <laughs> Welcome to I, Braino. For Braino, by Braino, about Braino. But everyone is here, everyone is here. The Vitos are here. Charles, everyone is here. What are you, what are you see what we're doing? What are they up to? What are they trying? Why are they all together? What's going on? What are they doing? What, what's happening there? Why are they all going? Why is there a thousand of them gathering? What are they doing? What's happening, hey? Is there a soccer tournament there? What's going on? <laughs> Who's speaking? Is Peter de Villiers speaking there? They got to listen to him. <laughs> get all the colors together in the playhouse and make sure that when we get together, we discuss issues for colored people because it's been a tough time for us and it's very important that we get forward as a nation and we get uh, I'm talking just nonsense now. Thank you so much for coming out. If there's a person next to you and they're not a braino, just look at them and say, I braino. Just look at them, I braino. But also white people, hey, nice, eh? Feels good, eh? <laughs> Yo, it's not so bad. <laughs> they make it sound like it's bad. The crazy thing is this show, call it I braino, right? And for some reason, people just couldn't get the title. They struggle. There's a guy that comes to all the shows. He sees me, says, in fact, I'm coming to that show, eh? It blew, no, eh? <laughs> so I'm like, I brain no. Yeah, I Zulu, he charo. What you going on about? <laughs> but white people were like so sharp. They like knew exactly what was going on. They're like, our brain is pretty clever, cough. Yeah. It's like our pet, eh? Our pet, our phone, eh? Our brain are like a colored our phone. <laughs> uh, does it also not work on Mondays? <laughs> that was my son. My son, he's three. Jaken. He wanted to come out here, and, he's, and we planned he's going to come out and say, ladies and gentlemen, my name. But then he had a plan, because he's trying to upstage me all the time. So his plan was that when I'm finished, then you must come out and introduce me. <laughs> and I was like, And then when you come out, what you gonna say? I'm gonna say, uh, everybody say our way. <laughs> Cause that's what he hears all the time. He's got a cool name, his name is Jaken Seven Goldstone, which is quite an unusual name. It's a nice, people say it's a nice name. So it's a cool name, but the only problem with him is that he's, he's got a lisp. <laughs> and like, his name is, so people, what's your name boy? Jaken Seven Goldstone. <laughs> and it's tough because, <laughs> When, you, when you're naming your baby, when you, get, you don't know, they don't tell you, look. <laughs> you don't want to show you that first picture. They don't say to you, we're looking at that first, like, just, it's just like, it's a mess. But only the doctor can see a baby's there and he, and he shows you, there's a speck. Like, I wish I'd show you the speck and they're like, you're like, doctor, what's this? Let me see that, let me see. Yeah. Look, don't give him any names with an S. <laughs> I can tell from this he's gonna have a lisp. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a car, like you buy a second and car, the guy starts it, you tick, 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 so you hear the tick, tick sound. Yeah, well, you bought it like that. You get the child, then he comes out, and he's like, <laughs> and he's a cool, he's, my son's cool though. He's like, uh, he's got this, this whole vibe about his name, and he loves his name. And it could have been worse, because I initially planned to name him Onesimus. <laughs> True story. There's a guy in the Bible. The Bible speaks nicely about him, Onesimus. I was gonna call him Onesimus, which in retrospect is like, I'm glad I didn't, because he got to school. What's your name, boy? Onesimus Goldstone. <laughs> oh, you got a list? Yes, Mr. Got a list. How cruel is that? How cruel is that? You describe the thing in a way that the child can't say. Lisp, I got a list. <laughs> so everyone with a list for, for every time I say list. <laughs> to describe what they got. And yeah, he's, he's, he's like, he's kind of fun. I, need, I, I talked to my wife, I said, Onesimus, I want to name this child Onesimus. And then she's like, no, 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 you mad. You can't name the child Onesimus. I was like, ah. what else? So I'm looking at the word Onesimus, and I noticed that the first three letters of Onesimus is O-N-E. So I came to her, I said, I got it. One. <laughs> she said, what we want? <laughs> I said, no, one. Let's name him one. She said, one? 
I'm like, yeah, my first one, your first one, our first one, unless you got another one. She's like, no, man, you can't name the child one. I'm like, why? My, look, look, my name's Carvin H. We're already in funny territory already, so. I'm like, no, let's name the child one. She's like, no, man, please. Have you ever met anyone named one? I said, how? Oh, you never met Ian. <laughs> So then we reach a compromise, right? She, she decided, like, she's like, no. If, we're gonna re if, we, if he's gonna have a number, then seven. <laughs> you must see, we're naming our first child and we're raising numbers here. Yeah. <laughs> I raised one, she raised me a seven. <laughs> I tell people, hey, don't hug me in public, my wife, hey. We name our child seven. <laughs> like she came out, yeah, yeah, horse, horse. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool, man. It's like, it's just that it's, as he's getting older, he's becoming like, like more strong-willed. He's like very strong-willed, like, he likes to challenge me. And I was talking to my parents, talking to my father. My parents stay overseas. They've been away for about 10 years. And I was talking to him, saying, oh, you know, he's a cool kid, but he's like, he's, he's so strong-willed. I don't know, like I want to just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 no. No, you mustn't hit them. I'm like, but, but what? <laughs> That's how you raised us? My mother would hit us. My mother had scriptures for hitting us. I'm not even joking. My mother would hit you with a scripture and quote the scripture. Rebellion is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod <laughs> gives a whole new meaning to Bible bashing. <laughs> when, and we never cared why these with rods and sticks and stones and why don't you throw a hammer? I said, ah, to. <laughs> But the rock will drive it far from him. <laughs> Proverbs 22, <laughs> verse 15. Then she looked at me. Come here. What now? What do you think? Come here. I need to hit you again. <laughs> Why? I quoted the wrong version. <laughs> Mama, mother had scriptures for everything. Absolute, there was nothing she didn't have. My mother had scriptures for bargaining. Yeah? Indian people, y'all don't even know that. Y'all didn't know there was a Bible verse. We'd go out to shop. My mother would say, no, give me less price, 40 rand. 40 rand. Uh, but ma, <laughs> hey, ma, you're already squeezing me. <laughs> if I'm 60, 45, please, ma. No, no, 40 rand. I'm embarrassed, ma, why are you doing that? The Bible says, in Proverbs, Chapter 20, verse 14. Too much, too much, he cries. And then goes and boasts about the bargain he got. True scripture, go look it up. Hey, Indian people, you don't even know you're being scriptural all this time, eh? You are following the scripts. So I, I talked to my father about my son. He's like, oh, yeah, what, what do I do? Like, He's like, no, 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 mustn't hit him. I'm like, why? He's, no, 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 you mustn't hit him. I'm like, but you know, you hit me proper when I was growing up. And you know your father, your father's calculating when he hits you. Your mother's random, pick up anything. Your father. Your mother says, go see your father. You know, oh, lady. I would take the whole book of Psalms for my mother to escape a Jesus whip from my father. <laughs> and my father would be like, no, 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 no. Don't eat them. So I said, what must I do? He says, you know, in England, yeah, you can't eat children. You will never eat a child. The social services will be on your door. You, so I say, what do we do? You no, know, you tell them, what, go stand in the corner. I said, stand in the corner. This is Africa. You can't tell African children stand in the corner. We live in round houses here. People live in round apples. You send a child, go stand in the corner. <laughs> My father and I, we often talk about stuff like, that just wouldn't work, like, yeah, like, like in England when they had riots, hey, those kids, they, like, 
in the street. Yeah, mate, what you gonna do, mate? You can't do nothing, mate. You can't do nothing. I was like, yo, send them here. <laughs> we all got a granny on the farm. <laughs> Make you work. They send him to the farm, they make him work. Granny say, you're right to go into plan today. Oh, I'm not proud, I'm not doing nothing, bro. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> okay, bring him Fubu, yeah? Bring him. <laughs> bring, what, what's Fubu? What's Fubu? I don't wear Fubu. No, don't worry, bring him Fubu. I was like, shy, bring it here. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, like, was, <laughs> when you start thinking like that, you live in that dual world where you're always comparing. I start competing like ob stuff, like I was sitting at home and I'm watching, like when you get married, you watch a lot of TV, right? <laughs> Before that, you're out and about, now you must just stay at home. Like, where are you going? Hey, no way, because you're chilling with a pause. <laughs> Can we pull in a hey, bad idea? <laughs> and my wife is into series like House. Mentalist, I'm parking, I'm watching. I wasn't a TV person, I'm parking, I'm watching all. Then I'm start thinking outside of the box now. I'm watching CSI with the, and I'm thinking, the CSI, I came to CSI late too. I came a hey, long into the, when it was ending. So now I have to catch up on SABC. Because <laughs> it's also an SABC. But on SABC, it just looks different. It just looks gray, like the colors are so rich on DSTV, it's so grey on SABC. It just looks like we're shot at the market. It just, it's got a different texture about it. Like, it actually looks like it was a local one, which made me think if we had a local CSI, like, like I got two proposals. CSI chats with, whole season on sugars. <laughs> or CSI, I'm lousy. Or Komashu. Komashu probably better. Komashu murder capital. You know when you have, but you must, you have the main American guy that comes on the scene. And he comes when, when the scene is set. Even the murders happen, he comes. <sighs> so what do we have? And the cops on the scene, like in the real one, looks like a homicide, got two shots in the chest. We got a witness on the left. We can't speak to him now. Okay, let's get back to the lab. And then they go and that's how it starts, right? But in the South African one, we keep that American guy, right? Because it needs to work. <laughs> Can't change everyone, right? <laughs> and the American guy comes and he's like, what do we have? And the South African cops are parking there. He was just laying here. I found him just laying. His leg is open, he's just, just laying like that. And the American guy's like, so what do, you, what, what do we know? Is he dead, is he alive? He never say he's dead, never say he's alive. Just laying here. Hey, hey, are you dead? Hey, if you're dead, must talk now, eh? Talk, hey, too much paperwork, please. And this whole series is about like what you get there at the scene and you take back to the lab. That's the most important thing. So the guy will be like, let's get him back to the lab. Get back to the lab. Okay, let's have a look at the DNA. Hey, DNA, DNA, who's asking for DNA, DNA, no, this was not a political killing, is it? there's no D-A-I-F-P, DNA, not, no, just him laying there, that is all we saw, him laying there, no, just like that, it's like, okay, I need something, did you get hair? They're back in, ooh, hey. Hi, hey, ah. You know who can organize hair? Hey. Detective Naidu, ah. Go to Naidu. Hey, Detective Naidu, please, man. Hey, hey that brigadier is sitting here, man. He's asking us for hair. Detective Naidu, ah, hair? What a trick question, then. Hey. Hey, yeah, what, what do you want? What do you want? What? No, hey, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> what do you never say there? I'll organize it, don't worry, don't worry, I'll organize it. I can organize it there, don't worry, I'll organize it. <laughs> this is a big theater, right? <laughs> it's a cool setup, we got like upstairs and downstairs. Feels like the flats, right? <laughs> so don't, don't make too much noise there, they're trying to watch TV, yeah? <laughs> 
don't bang the floor. Because <laughs> they'll send their children upstairs. You don't live in a the flat, they're making noise. Just go to upstairs and tell those people to stop making noise. A child comes upstairs. My mother said that, can you please stop making noise? Because she's trying to watch her bold. <laughs> bold and a beautiful for those, you know? And then the other child standing there, usually about 16, 17. What? We don't, no, no. Don't y'all come upstairs here by us, eh? When you're having parties and playing loud, loud music. Because you know loud, loud is louder than loud. Very important lesson here. Colored people speak in twos and threes. Twos when they're being sarcastic. Threes when they're being sincere. Twos, loud, loud music when you're big, big speakers. You go to a wedding, you see it. Ladies that did their hair, it starts raining, they run. Oh. The ones that didn't do their hair, ooh, yeah. Because they want to come with fancy, fancy hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you, you see that show, The Home Makeover. The Home Makeover, makeover, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. That can't work in our community. <laughs> because that requires a community to help, to pull for someone. That guy will come, we're gonna build a house for the ogles. We want you guys to just get together and help us. Help for what? <laughs> to build for who? The ogles, they fall in hard times. Hard times! You must be here when they're coming with big, big Edgar's packets. <laughs> Carrying big, big Edgar's packets. Continental pillows. <laughs> but when we're being sincere, we speak in threes. Twos don't work, threes. Someone will come, hey, please, Marge, help me, man. I need a 50 and I'm broke, broke, broke. <laughs> That's sincerity. Three times the sincerity. Broke, broke, broke. Even my husband doesn't want to work. That man is lazy, lazy, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a rule here, right? I should tell you, you know, the last week we went to visit my sister. I told him, you just don't drink. We got there. Hey, already asking for a top. After a few minutes, drunk, drunk, drunk. <laughs> Even now he's at home. Finish, finish, finished. <laughs> there is a key here. Finish, 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 and drunk, drunk, drunk means the same thing in that context. So you don't have to use all three. And now, what's gonna happen? I'm so scared to take him, because you know how he is? Every weekend, finish, finish, drunk. <laughs> Some of you are sitting here, hey, that's my granny there. <laughs> Hey, my granny, too, like a hey, granny. <laughs> Are any grannies here? Are any grannies? Who? Granny? Anyone brought their granny? You came with your granny. Don't be, I'm not gonna pick on you. I'm not gonna pick on you. <laughs> you did? I just wanna, I wanna give you a hand for bringing your granny out. They don't go out much. Well done. Now do me a favor, right? Help your granny with a cell phone for silent day. Just... <laughs> help her, help her. Please, man. Because when you're in church and a phone rings, let's be honest, it's always an old person. It's never a young person. It's never someone young. It's always someone older. And they sit like it's not their phone. They still complain. You know these young people. Someone says, Sister Beatrice, it's you. Me? Hi. Oh, my eyes are bad, man. Who's this now? Oh, I can't see my child. Just read who's phoning you. Who's that? Yeah? Who? Private number. Private. Now, where I met a private now? I, I don't know private. And you get those ones that are like very eager, like they're over eager to answer their phones. You know those ones there? Hello? Hello? And they're putting the phone down here. Hello? Who's phoning me? Oh, it's SMS. My husband. Please call where you. I told him I'm going to the show. And they post today. Grannies don't just live like on corners talking over fence. They live on Facebook and where yeah, they fall. They are with everything. Grannies on Facebook, like you wonder what they talk about. Like when they message each other, hey Marge, why do you die? 
so they like to play games with death. They never tell you, you heard who died. What a thing to do. Throw a question, you heard who died. Why don't you just say, you heard who died? Who? Don't, don't say. <laughs> Why don't say? <laughs> Like a game, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you're right. I shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> and they love, they love, they on Facebook. And you can always tell when someone's granny just came on Facebook. A photo is always, <laughs> it's always the comments underneath. Hey, Marge, you must always come out sideways, yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing about Facebook, though, is like women have a code. They have a, what, like a Facebook code. Like guys, we just like whatever. We're on Facebook, we do our own thing. Women have a code. If a woman posts a picture on Facebook of herself, no matter how horrible that photo is, another woman cannot say anything. Underneath only comments, oh, looking good, girl. <laughs> <laughs> looking sexy, ma. Go get him, girl. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm waiting for the girl that has the plug to write. Hey, 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 hey. Take this photo down now. <laughs> And it's crazy because like some people, now that Blackberry is such a big deal, some people, they, they look at Blackberry and they believe Blackberry broadcasts before they even believe the real news. They'll watch the news, the news will say, no people were killed in today's truck strike, but there's the message on PBM. <laughs> but there's a, yeah, 70 people killed. There's a, yeah. I'll read the Blackberry news. They'll only believe the news if it was called a black. Let's read this news. Don't worry about those people there. This news says 17 people killed. Stay away from Smith Street, Russell. They're pulling people out of cars. <laughs> and in the business news, <laughs> Woolworths is hiring. <laughs> Coloreds. <laughs> There's the news here. Yeah? Please send your CV to Mark Finn at Engine Oil. His wife works at Woolworths, but he took away her Blackberry. He's going to print them at work or bring to church on Sunday. There's so many CVs going to church on Sunday. Like me, I don't stress. When I heard that white and black people had a, a, a bit of a misunderstanding over Woolworths, I was like, what are you going on about? We all know Woolworths is our gig. <laughs> Woolworths has always been colored people's gig. Every colored person sitting here worked, know someone, related to someone who worked at Woolworths. Every single one of you. That's always been our gig. What are they fighting over? <laughs> Why are they fighting over Woolworths jobs? We working there for years. We know the ins and outs of Woolworths. And let me say something. I support white people's protest of Woolworths. Boycott Woolworths, go for it. You guys, go for it. You know why? Because our mothers work there. <laughs> and when the stuff stands on the shelf for long, <laughs> every kind of person should be supporting this boycott. Don't shop at Woolworths. We taking y'all, no? We taking home things. We were eating the delicacies back in the day. <laughs> we were eating things we couldn't even spell, except. <laughs> if I told most of you, what you're showing? Hey, you say this is a other kind of bread, yeah, bro. That's called a cross, a cross. A crossy, a hey, a cross. Do you know a croissant? What a croissant? C-R-O-I, what a cross. You can check you not trying Woolworths by your boss. You don't even know what it's called, yeah. <laughs> we were eating top Woolworths, Charles. We were eating, you know, whipped cream, putting it on bread. There was so much of it. <laughs> Colored people were throwing blue cheese away. You go, I see, why the blue cheese in the bin? Oh, it's off. <laughs> but you say this thing's not off. You mean it's supposed to taste like that? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> so white people, boy, God. You are giving a colored child a piece of blue cheese for supper. <laughs> but one thing you have to, I have to admit, like, the way they went about white people, white and black people, when they got an issue, they stand, they stand together. They were canceling their Woolworths accounts and everything. Colored and Indian people can't stand for nothing. I don't know who's worse between the two of y'all. <laughs> colored and Indian people never stand together. 
This is a true story. I did a story when I was a crime reporter. This guy phoned me from Phoenix. Hey, how's it? Uh, please, man, uh, can you come out to Phoenix? We've had a bit of a problem. I said, okay. What happened? No, in fact, what happened was someone threw a hand grenade through the roof. <laughs> so I'm thinking a hand grenade through the roof in Phoenix. Hand grenade, Phoenix, hand grenade, Phoenix. It's not what you can sense. I go there. I go there for VAR, carport, blown open. True story, I got the story at home. Someone threw a hand grenade, blew this, this whole thing open. So I'm talking, I'm interviewing this guy, I'm saying, hey, this is interesting, man, so, any idea who did this? Yeah, we know. <laughs> like who? My, my brother. <laughs> I'm not even making this up, my brother did it. Wow, why would he do that? No, we're in the same business. The pie is not big enough for the two of us, so this is how he carries on. I'm like, wow, and, and, and uh, have you spoken to him? Where is he? Yeah, he stays next door. <laughs> True story. I don't know. That's a micro level. We can't stand together for stuff. White and black people can stand. And you know when it's most apparent? It's during elections. Whenever elections come around, the figures show colored and Indian people vote the least. We don't take part in the process. We don't. White people vote. Black people vote. Coloreds and Indians are, mm. And they're trying to figure out why. I figured out long time ago why we don't vote. It's because they put votes in stations in places we don't want to be. <laughs> like you convince a brain, no, XLF I vote, and where's it happening? The library. <laughs> ah, library, ah. This is a catch I want to pour for me, eh? <laughs> I got a book outstanding from Senate 3, ah, check what you're doing, ah. <laughs> no library, aye. All right then, let's go to school. By what? School! <laughs> and my man, I never write to school since then at 3 except. <laughs> I never had a book review in a wide one way. <laughs> and then in Indian people, right? This is in chats with the last election, they put a voting station in a church. Come on, guys. We won't vote, we will never vote. We know what they're trying to do. They want to put us in the church, telling us we're voting, then they lay hands, we fall down, we wake up Christian. <laughs> We will never, we are in lose. <laughs> we won't do that. Only my son is into conversions. We're not into conversions. <laughs> so this is my solution, right? To get colored Indian people voting, right? Put voting stations in places we want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like Indian people. Is this not as clear as daylight? Put a voting station in Sun Coast. Put a voting station in Sun Coast Casino! Indian people will vote in the thousands! Can I have a please? Or put a voting station in like a curry shop, like Johnny's Rotis. Indian people will vote. Too much say, hey, how's it, how's it? Like, like, can I have uh, a Babu special? And a minority front, please? Yeah. Can you put uh, extra gravy? You want gravy? Yeah. Put extra gravy, please. Mutton gravy. Yeah. What? What? Only ANC comes with gravy. <laughs> I don't want their gravy. No, I don't want their gravy. <laughs> and for colored people, right? I'm talking big numbers. I'm talking huge, huge, huge numbers. Not you guys. You guys vote. Big numbers. Those out there that aren't voting. Put a voting station in a bottle store. Hear me out, guys. Put a voting station in a bottle store. Colored people will vote. They'll come inside there. Can I have two black labels? And an ACDP. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Jesus also turned water to wine. Don't judge me. Don't judge. All you'll know is judge, judge, judge. Don't judge me. And things I don't drink. And it's a strange thing being colored and not drinking because people assume you drink. And other colored people look at you and they see you like a mission field. <laughs> they need to evangelize with the gospel of alcohol. Brother, when you get your first drink, brother, you'll never be the same, my bro. <laughs> 
And like drinking's never been attractive to me. It's never been attractive to me. And it always will tell you, I say, you don't know what you're missing out on. It's a topping. And they must put it in English, in Afrikaans, in Zulu for it to be emphasized. Say, you know, when you're drinking, you get like a drunk, I say, hey, da, kiwe, my man. And then there's those people that take words from the English language to substitute being drunk or say, think it as. One who came to me, he said, hey, you know, when you're drunk, he say, hey, you get like a paralytic. I'm like paralytic, guys. <laughs> Come on, that's not a nice thing to say. No? Paralytic, comparing yourself to a wheelchair being drunk. Come on now, guys, that's, that's, that's not nice. Because what is a person in a wheelchair supposed to say if they get drunk? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm thinking out loud. What is he supposed to say? Must he think of the next thing? Must he now think, Alexei, we were so drunk, we were blind, couldn't check where we were rolling, bruh. <laughs> And Indian people have their own way for describing being drunk. And they meet you, and first when they see you, hey, what time, brain, hey, like, uh, move all the brain, hey, we're dopping, 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 moving all, dopping, dopping, hey, we say, finish, tananas. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what, what did you say, tananas, tananas? You don't, you don't know tananas, tananas. I'm like, no, tananas. <laughs> How did you come across that word? How did you, eh, eh, tananas? Tananas, man. Everyone knows Tananas. Tananas. I'm like, where did this word come from? Who was the first Indian guy that came home, sat on his couch? Wife said, where you come from? Huh? Was drinking? Huh? Yeah, no. Hey, I'm Tananas, man. Hey. I'm Tananas. I can't say anything but Tananas. <laughs> but listen to this strange coincidence. Three weeks ago, I was in Peter Maritzburg telling the story. And this lady from Cape Town comes up to me after I tell this Tanana story and she looks at me and she says, I must want, I want to talk to you <laughs> about Tananas. In Cape Town, when you're drinking, we must say that your thunder is not. <laughs> You've heard that before, your thunder is not. But we must speak Kombais Afrikaans, it becomes Tananat. <laughs> and somehow when it came to Durban, maybe it became Tananas. <laughs> and that makes perfect sense, because Indian people put S at the end of words. I'm grabbing the hubs, they're moving the hubs in the games and the jets. We're grabbing those all over parts. And we are dumping, dumping to the NAS! Actually, it makes so much! <laughs> this makes perfect sense. This is a true story. And the funny thing about Tananas does when, 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 you, when you say that, and you say that word like, just like, there's images in your mind. There's like images in your mind. You just picture people. Like, I, I always picture my family functions. Like my mother's side of the family is uh, very Indian colored. Have you been to an Indian colored function? <laughs> yeah? Whenever my mother's side of the family gets together, it's Indian colored. My mother's saved, she was the only one saved in her family. So whenever a function happened, there was a debate at home about whether we're gonna go or not. No, we can't go. They're gonna be drinking and carrying on there. No, we mustn't go. My father's living very level headed, like, no, Atta, let's go. You're, gonna, you're not drinking. <laughs> You're going to be with them, you're enjoying yourself, you're going to wish your mother, whatever. No, 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 the Bible says. <laughs> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> mm -mm, no, we're not going to go. Yeah? He must meditate on the word day and night. My father gets angry. Okay, then, all right, no, all right, you don't meditate. You meditate. Sing a man, you must meditate then. You know, you carry on, you meditate. Because my mother was heavy, it's like her whole desire for us growing up was that she must be saved, my children. It was so intense that she'd even play games, like what you're gonna consider cruel games. Like, <laughs> she'd send you to the shop, go to the shop, come back, house is empty. <laughs> Stove is on, TV's on, you're walking around, Ma! 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 Start panicking, ma. She stepped out of a corner. And that's what's gonna happen when the rapture happens. <laughs> when the rapture happens and your life is not right, it's gonna be just like that. You're gonna come and be all gonna be gone. <laughs> so like, every my father's like the buffer. He like, he buffer and he like, he's very down to earth. Plus two, you must know he, he, he grew up quite hard, really hard. So he tries to buffer and give us a bit of outdoors, let experience life. So you always send us to a family function. No, let's go, man, let's go. And the thing is that family functions, though, like, 
you realize that we're so different, but we're actually all the same. We all, most of us, we're all the same. We are the same people. Because when it comes to dancing and, and, and our family functions, you realize that everyone just has their own poison. Like my Indian family. <laughs> and usually when the Indian family is dancing, the colors are parking on the side watching and quarreling. Hey, check them. Check out that dancing. <laughs> See the rhythmless city. See? <laughs> See that dancing. Those kind of people tease you if you go and dance. And Indian people, their poison is, is give me hope, Joanna. I know that's all. <laughs> they find out sister, they give me hope. Hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they got the clapper like that. One uncle always clapping a dance. <laughs> and white people's poison is, I've been to enough white weddings to see this, is in Kalagata. <laughs> white people can't resist that song. They just, as they hear, do, 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 hey. Flow. They, they don't, the thing is, I don't even know if, you, if they like white so, but this song they like, they like Mendoza's song more than black people. Black people don't even like in Kalagata. White people love this. But colored people, my family, whenever it was time to dance, even if they're chilling, they're acting all cool, there's one number, A, it just puts them in a different mode. And you must know now, <laughs> when they get out there, something about the song just switched them in a the wrong mode. They'll be parking, chilling, as soon as they hear, did, did, did it. I dropped a bomb. Some people say I yeah, could be good for you. And it's on the floor. Do, 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 do. I got myself so many love affairs to care for you. Oh. Ah. You see, you see, look at them, you see. They can't resist the song. They all know it. And the funny thing about this song here, yeah, for those of you, let me just pull you in, right? Pull you into the circle. What is going on now? This song here, yeah, right, has had a connection to a gang, the K1 Trucks. And so this song, whenever it came, if you listen closely, they're not even saying, the song says, I love to truck. They on the floor singing, I love the trucks. And all my aunties, the woman with the heaviest, they're on the, the floor, their fingers in the air. There's a preach, I love the trucks, yes. I love the, yes. Oh. That was a good, that was a good function. These days, we don't have functions like that anymore. You know why? Because like, it's, in, it's popular to get married far away. <laughs> Everyone is getting married, the boys and what, what. Everything is happening far away. You guys have destroyed the gate crashing industry. <laughs> Those gate crashers played a very important role. Because every wedding is their table that didn't come. Some days too. Why they didn't come? The father said, no, my father said, if you can't invite children, we all won't go. <laughs> <laughs> there's always that table. And if you're getting married far away, there's no gate crashers to fit in there just to like make it look like it's full like. Because those gay crush, we know who they, they're always the one that's asking, hey, you got a spoon, can I have a spoon there? Is there, <laughs> is there a spoon? You said the spoon's on the table. <laughs> well, we don't have a table. <laughs> and the thing about kind of people is that most of them actually just want priyani, that's what they want. They don't, they don't want all the fancy, they want priyani. I've been to fancy weddings. The groom afterwards, top chow, uncle outside, Alexi and IT, but hey, you know what, I would have hit the spot, a priyani there. <laughs> Yeah, like if you just had a biryani, like, hey, just, you know, on the side, like. All they want is biryani, and while they eat their biryani, they want Kenny G. That's all they want. They don't want anything else. They want to listen to Kenny G while they're eating their biryani. Kenny G makes an appearance at all our weddings. Over the food, do, 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 do. <laughs> always ask DJs, why do you, why do you play Kenny G? When we're eating, what, what's, what is the purpose? <laughs> is it because he also got something in his mouth? What, what do we... <laughs> It's because you know in India, they use the, the flute to charm snakes. That snake is... That snake's supposed to bite him and forget, hey, what I'm doing here? Hey, hey, what, hey, what's going on? Hey, they're doing the same thing to us with Kenny G. <laughs> you don't even notice the food is funny. <laughs> they play Kenny G, do, do, hey, nice, huh? 
Even the potatoes are soft on <laughs> As soon as the music stops, how where's the meat? <laughs> we also don't have meat, how? <laughs> And I think about colored weddings. Whether they're getting married in a hall in the community or out in the bush, they all still want drapes. <laughs> what is the thing with drapes? Why do you love drapes so much? Drapes. You go to a wedding, it's like this venue is right just the way it is. No, it's missing something. <laughs> yeah, put drapes. Put right round, put drapes. Put drapes, it'll be better. And you go to a wedding and you're like, what is going on here? Why is there a seance happening here? Why are there so many drapes all over? There's drapes on the top, drapes on the back, drapes on the table, drapes on the dress. Even the aunties are waving, ah, there's a drape. <laughs> there's drapes absolutely everywhere. There's just everywhere you look, it's just drapes. I hate drapes. <laughs> everywhere it goes, just drapes. And you check that. If you're getting married soon, do me a favor, whatever, invite me so I can tell them about your dream. <laughs> but the thing about weddings though, like I got married, when I got married to Latoya, we got married and we're like, uh, we're gonna invite a couple people like, and then we're gonna get Briani or whatever, you know? Keep it simple, get married in Newlands East. And then uh, there's a lot of people came, a lot of people. I'm not even joking, I think there was six, seven hundred <laughs> people. I was meeting people at the wedding. Hey, what are you getting married? Hey, lucky, exam, man. Hey, lucky, man. Yeah, lucky you're doing this for the community. <laughs> people were rocking up at the wedding. <laughs> people were rocking up. Is the, is the, is the Hare Krishna having biryani here? Yeah. <laughs> there was just biryani. People were moving with ice cream bowls. And <laughs> Everyone was just like, it was a free for all. And like, you know, you look back and you're like, hey, one thing, we spend way too much money on like weddings. Huh? Too much investment on weddings, not enough investment in the actual marriage, the long process. We should spend more of that time building up, building on the marriage. Because the wedding day comes and it's gone in a flash. They finish talk about your dress, your biryani, your drapes, everything. <laughs> and now you're sitting with the burden, the reality of now living with this person that you're living with for the first time that you haven't prepared for. Now you're in a situation and women today aren't like women of the past. Women of the past put up with a whole lot of things. <laughs> he doesn't want to work, but you know, he's a good husband. <laughs> they put up with all types of things. These women today don't put up with the stuff like, oh, visit a bra. Next year, what kind? Three weeks, where's the fro? Hey, she buy it, next year. <laughs> For far, hey, next year. What happened? No, next year. I didn't think it was a big issue. But she tuned, I'm being on the seat, she never signed up for this. <laughs> and that's why you killed me for that thing on the seat. Ooh. So I always say, people, sometimes don't rush into marriage. Take a break, right? Take a break. Just like reality check. Even if there's a baby on the way, just hold it. Marriage might not be what you need right now. It's not like the old days. You know, the old days, especially safe people, if you fell pregnant, they punish you with a wedding. <laughs> Punish you with a wedding in a lounge. I'm not even joking. <laughs> they punish you with a wedding in the lounge, bro. I've seen wedding photos. People getting married in the lounge. There's toilies and what what in the photos. In the lounge, people are getting married. And you must wear plain clothes. <laughs> you're like, what? Are you undercover here? <laughs> Why are you dressed like that? Those days are gone. Like, if whatever happens, you fall pregnant, whatever. Don't rush. Just take some time. Take a step back. Your parents, they'll get over it. They'll forgive you. They're angry now, they'll get over later. They'll even act like that child is their child. They'll be like, more, you will trying to hit the child. You can't hit this child, man. You will turn this child against you. Come here, my baby. Mommy's naughty. Mommy's naughty. Come here, my, you. They'll forgive you. Just take a step back, figure it out. Then when you're ready, go, you know, find yourself a place with built-in cupboards. <laughs> Let your mother brag, hey, my child, man, hey. hey she's doing all right, but yeah? She even got herself a place with built-in cupboards. <laughs> <laughs> because there's things we exalt. Mid-90s architecture. Built-in cupboards, then there's the big three. The big three. Number one, ceiling fans. What was going on in the 90s? Today, everyone's supposed to buy ceiling fans. 
No, we pray. We install it a long time. That thing's broken, doesn't work. We don't take it down. You hang the uh, Christmas decorations. So I even torn the decorations are stuck in the fan. <laughs> Ceiling fans and that thing that you pull, that thing broke like first year. They're tying ribbons and all on this thing to pull it down. <laughs> Ceiling fans. Number two, aluminium window frames. <laughs> if you want people to know that you made it, aluminium window frames. You don't want them in your house, but you want them to know you made it? Aluminium window frames. Your neighbors will talk, hey, they're doing well, eh? <laughs> you saw the whole house aluminium. Other one will say, yeah, I even look through the door. You know they don't like us to visit, I look. Because if you don't like people in your house, they know what's in your house, they always look. I looked, I even saw inside doors aluminium, eh? Even the TV stand, aluminium. Hey, they drink so well. People love aluminium. And then there's the king, the king. This is the king, right at the top of the pile. The most important piece of 90s interior design. Listen to me. I don't care what you did in your life. You could have had four babies before you turned 18, took all your mother's jewelry, sold it for drugs, doesn't matter. All that will be wiped away if you tile your mother's house. You tile your mother's house. You have given her the greatest prize ever. She will tell everyone, hey, this child shocked me, but man. Eh? Imagine, he tiled the house. The whole house ceramic tiles, I was, you know, we lifted those molly tiles, there was water underneath them. Hey, this child, he shocked me. Never mind what he did in his life, man. He tiled my whole house. I can't believe it. I still said to my husband, you know, Paulie was in an accident. Paulie was in a, yeah, my youngest son. I still said, how long are we waiting when the road accident fund money comes? <laughs> we, we're gonna take some. Because <laughs> you know, kind of people treat road accident fund like a lottery. <laughs> when they get road accident, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a lottery, like, whoa, money's coming. They will beat each other. Someone, someone's in an accident, someone comes, hey, you'll hurt. Paulie was in an accident. Yeah, yeah. What was it? Truck. I love to truck, yes. I love to. I was gonna take the money for, from the road accident fund, you know, just take a little bit aside. Some of it must go for his rehabilitation and, you know, his psychotherapy, he must learn how to walk again. So I was, and then I was gonna just take it and tile the whole house. And you know, but this child came and he just did it for me. Hey, I forgive him for everything he done, man. He tiled, and it's not just us. It's everyone loves tiling. Indian people love tiling so much. In, in Mirbank, there's houses with tiles outside. <laughs> True, there's outside, the outside, the walls outside. You know, you know not anyone, you know those, those, those bathroom ones with the water splash inside. You walk past it, it was raining here. It's, just, it's like it was raining. <laughs> and if you're doing well, and you don't tile your mother's house, Ooh, they'll talk about you forever. They'll tell you where the, what the Vasi's son is doing now. Yeah? That fellow's a doctor. Yeah, he's doing very well for himself. Not any doctor, not just any doctor. That fella, Barack Obama's doctor. Yeah. You know that fella, Barack Obama won't go anywhere unless Silva says you can go. He won't eat nothing. He won't touch a thing. If, if Sifa don't say you can eat that barak, you won't eat it. Even Michelle Obama was getting so angry. She say, Sifa this, Sifa that, Sifa everything, eh? Huh? I'm nothing to you now, I only Sifa everything. And the other lady will be like, yeah, but you think he'll have the decency to tile his mother's house? <laughs> that poor old lady, yeah? But the carpet's full of dust. Her chest is so wheezing. <laughs> Her chest is... <laughs> That child, no, I don't look like that. No, not like that. You must tell your mother's house. If you don't tell your mother's house, then you're nothing to us. You must tell your mother's house. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing, though, about the, like, like tiles is that when we, when Latoya and I started looking for a house, the one thing we, we didn't look for was tiles. But it's so inbred in, in, in the estate agents that we want tiles. They'll see us. The first thing, it's got built-in cupboards, aluminum frames and it's fully tiled. <laughs> and we're like, no. Because <laughs> they like, 
they saw him breathe, they know colored people love tiling. And we're like, no, no, we're not looking for that. And when you're a first time buyer, if you don't know like things, they'll catch you with stuff like that. Building cupboards, tiling, aluminum frames. So something, you know, that's what we need. That's what we need. It's not what you need. It's not what you need wooden floors if you're going into a suburb. Go <laughs> find the wooden floors. And we get into a suburb and we look for houses. And let me say this, I grew up in Newlands my whole life, right? I was in Newlands 26 years of my life. I didn't have much interaction with white people growing up. I lived in Newlands, my father drove taxis in Newlands, and he owned taxis in Newlands, my mother taught in Newlands, we went to church in Newlands. I had no interaction with white people, except the missionaries that came from Sweden and stayed by our house. <laughs> but they, not, they don't really count, because they're not the same, they're different, very sweet, and they were, they were cool people. So the first time I had proper interaction with white people was when I got to college. And when we started, the first time I got into white people's houses was when we started looking for houses. And I was under the impression all the years that white people are clean. <laughs> because you would assume like white gets dirty quickly, those who are wearing one. You have to wash it more often. <laughs> I thought that all white people were clean. That's what I thought. No, not the case at all. We went into houses on the Bluff and Glenwood and Carrington Heights full of dust because the dogs are in the house when they're supposed to be outside, dogs are in the house. <laughs> full dust, you are in the bedroom, there's just dust, there's cockroaches marching around there. Do you know what kind of cockroaches? Cockroaches? <coughs> and we're suffering with asthma, bro. <laughs> Don't bother us, bro. <laughs> they say cockroaches will survive anything, bro. <laughs> the ones here in the Bluff, bro, we finished. <laughs> We looked everywhere, unless you show up, you're gonna get caught. And the thing is, we eventually, when we, went, when we did find a house, we moved to the bluff. One thing I noticed that was significantly different. There's a few things that are the same, and there's a few things that are different. One thing I noticed that was different was that on the bluff, you don't hear screaming. <laughs> like in our community, people are always screaming, hey, hey, stop it, leave him, leave him. <laughs> you don't hear that. <laughs> Oh, it's always unified screaming. You're parking at home, quiet. Yeah! You know, Man United scored. <laughs> Bafana Bafana scored. Chiefs scored. Pirates scored. Liverpool almost scored. But you know... <laughs> <laughs> you know something happened. I was parking at home the other few weeks ago. I'm sitting there. On the bluff, my neighbors are quiet. All of a sudden, I yell loud, yeah! I'm like, what was that? I start flicking through channels. What excited them? I'm like, what could it be? I'm checking sports channels. There's no sports on, yeah? I get to the news, and Julius Malema has been charged. They were going, yeah! Yeah! They're in the streets singing. Kalagata, dang, dang, dang. I don't think you don't notice, like, uh, when you live, when you move to a, a suburb, oh, one thing that you do notice, but they're different, is monkeys. My gosh, I come from Newlands. Newlands, we got monkeys, monkeys for days. But we don't have your average, we got your, <laughs> we got your gangster monkeys. <laughs> you walking and I see a monkey walk across the road there. <laughs> Throw a five rand there. <laughs> monkeys got richy, rich tattoos. <laughs> Right to the shop, ladies in the shop. I say, what happened? She says, hey, you know, I just got robbed. I say, who robbed you, the monkeys? <laughs> they came in here, stole a banana, stole an apple, stole a daily sun. I said, daily sun, I should never have said this papers for monkeys. <laughs> and then took two loose cigarettes. I'm like, two loose cigarettes, yeah? Still came back and said, Stuyvesant, Stuyvesant. <laughs> I said, what you did? I found the cops. For what? They must look for a monkey with a quiet behind its ear. <laughs> no pockets, it's keeping it here. So when I got to the bluff, like, I thought, hey, I wonder if the monkey's only less here. Hey, I was so wrong. There's even more there. There's more monkeys. These are other kind of monkeys. These monkeys drive beach buggies. Walk and slip something. Hazard me! Hazard me! Hazard! Hazard! Please, my breaking your help us out. Hazard me! Heavy monkeys in the bluff. And I come from, my father comes from the farm, right? And with monkeys, they got a theory that you paint it white. <laughs> and then you send it and then it chases the other monkeys. It's trying to say to them, hey, I'm part of you all. And they're saying, hi, we don't know you. And they run and they run and they keep running until they're gone. Farm theory, right? I don't know if it's true. <laughs> 
So, so I was trying to throw a stone at the monkey, and my neighbor saw me. She's like, hey, you can't do that. I'm like, do what? You can't hit monkeys. I'm like, why? They were here before us. I'm like, yeah, before us, yeah, before you. Not colored people, we've been here for years and years. <laughs> and probably the most striking thing like you notice when you move to a suburb is you notice mixed couples, colored boys with white girls. This was unusual for me coming from Newlands East to see it this widespread on the bluff. <laughs> and you must know the old saying, I don't know if it's the O's that the cherries and the Wednesdays don't want, or what is it, but a rough O's, they say. O's are still standing floppies, <laughs> moving with Stamson, Samson, Stetsons. They're always fighting these white. My, my dad is so angry with you. My dad doesn't even want to see you. I never wanted to see me in the first place. <laughs> Your, uh, and the thing about this, right, is that, like, I always said, like, if I ever get a white girlfriend, me, I got a rule. They're not all the same. You know where the Ambilo River runs? I don't want South. <laughs> Belly, Sea View, no, 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 no. I'm going North. I'm Schlanger, I'm going Durban North, Lelouchia, I'm going out to West. Just off the Pine Town, Hillcrest, Kloof. Her dad, I'm not, if I'm marrying white, I'm not gonna marry poor. We already poor. <laughs> What's the point of going? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. It's a chance to marry rich. Why? Um, when I marry, if I'm marrying a white girl, I'm going in there. I must walk up there. I must know I arrive. A dad must drive a white fortuna. White fortuna. <laughs> you must be the guy that doesn't want to give you a gap. You must be that guy. <laughs> you, must, you must take you into the office. I don't want him to work for a great company. He must own a great company. He must own something we know, like black cat peanut butter. <laughs> you come in, you sit, says, Kov, come in my office. In his office, he's got a gold frame drawing, painting of Franz Pina lifting the trophy, signed by the whole team that he, he paid for at an auction to help a guy fall in hard times. He must be that guy. And he must sit me down and he must say, Kov, you come into the family. I want to talk to you, bro. Let me tell you the story of how we started Black Cat Peanut Butter. 50 years ago, my dad and I, we knew that apartheid's going to end and black is the future. <laughs> we knew that, bro. And so we decided way back then that we'll form a company and it will appeal to every South African post-apartheid. And that's how we came up with Black Cat Peanut Butter. Every business today got black in the name. Shabalala, Tetua. We went straight for the juggler, black. <laughs> we, knew, we knew very well what people love cats. They love animals. So we put cat. They don't even notice that this cat is black. They love them so much. There's no race when it comes to animals and white people. Black rhino, white rhino, they all need to be saved. <laughs> they don't discriminate when it comes to anything. And then for you as we saw you as of the future. So we decided, let's make our product brown. In future, everyone will be brown. Have the product placed brown. And yeah, it will appeal. I say, what about Indian people? We made it a bit oily, just, yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I don't want to go to, like, uh, I don't want to go to, to visit, like, oh, this white girl that I'm going to marry or whatever, and her dad's waiting for me by the gate. Is that him? Is that him? <laughs> and I walk in, I get to the gate. Are you sure he's boyfriend? Like, yeah. My bro, do you mind giving me a few scapes? I was about to go to the shop, but I just want to come. Just a few smokes, my bro, please. Man, don't, just help me up, my bro, just a few smokes, eh? I told Shiri she's going the right way marrying you, eh? No, oh, you, you brown eyes are the future, eh? Yeah, yeah. No, I tell her, she, she, if she's going to marry, she must marry brown, eh? Maybe you can even organize, because now she can't get a job, bro. These whitlots who's running around here can't get jobs. If she marries you, she can work at Woolworths or something. You know what I'm saying? Just, bro, no, you can organize. Because the thing is, like, when, you, when, you, when you're choosing, like, a partner or whatever, you, 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 sometimes you, you, like, you inquire. A lot of people don't inquire across race lines. And I was the same, except for a few Indian girls that interested me. I'm a very homely person. I like homely girls. And there was this girl that I kind of went out with. And she was cool, Indian girl, nice girl. 
very pretty, very homely, you know, like, like a pure gem, like. And then, and then I, I didn't realize, like, how homely she was until we went to a restaurant, like, and we're parking there. She, she didn't give me any indication about what she's about to do. Sitting there, we're just chilling, whatever, order the food. I pick up my fork, she looks at me. Okay, how's your day? <laughs> so I was like, what, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I have to eat with my hands. I can't help it, I have to eat with my hands. I'm sorry, I have to eat with my hands. So I was like, no, no, thank you, no, no. <laughs> Not gonna work out. Do me a favor, sorry, waiter, can you take this in a doggy bag and can you wrap that in a banana leaf for her, please? <laughs> This is not gonna work. But anyway, I wouldn't leave someone over food. I mean, me, leave someone over food. No, no, no. There was another reason why we couldn't see eye to eyes. She wanted to be, she, she wanted to be an actor. She had this Bollywood, she loved Bollywood movies and she wanted to be involved in Bollywood. And, and the thing, the problem is, with, it's possible, but the problem with her was that she's, she was like, she was dark, like, she's a little bit dark. And I'm not saying it, Bollywood is saying it. There's no place in Bollywood for dark Indian girls. And I couldn't get this across to her. If you're dark and you're an Indian girl, there's no place in Bollywood for you. you. You won't get the job. The only thing you can act in a movie, in a Bollywood movie, if you're dark and you're Indian, is maybe, maybe, maybe you can be a tree. <laughs> maybe I can be a tree, like. Say, what? What you doing, mom, acting? What you are? I'm a tree. But where your leaves? No, winter. Okay. What's your name? Sao Tree? <laughs> and why are you chewing like that? No, they said I'm a gum tree. <laughs> but the thing about Indian girls, like I feel sorry in her case too. Indian girls, when you when you like with them or whatever, and those of you who are, who are with Indian girls now, they always just came out of a bad relationship. <laughs> Oh, it was, he was too possessive, but it was very hectic, and my father, it didn't work out. They always just came out of a bad relationship, and you're like, you're like, they like, to kind of, uh, I don't know what it is with Indian guys, but Indian guys are getting a very hard time lately, like, like, you know, in the news with Shreen Devani, and then there was Matthew Naidu from Phoenix, and you know, that case was particularly painful, because the, the whole story has came out in court, that he apparently influenced them, or whatever, to kill their parents for the inheritance, and you know, I must say, I'm a colored person, right, and I kind of watched this whole thing unfold and how these how these kids kill their parents for inheritance and colored people we have many problems social ills or whatever but one thing I can honestly say is we will never kill our parents for inheritance never ever never you know why because deep down we know there's no money there <laughs> We know there's no money there. We know there's not. You kill your parents, you're gonna inherit, inherit Edgar's accounts. You're gonna inherit there, you're gonna inherit Edgar's, and you've got Itala, there's a loan of 250, and you got the body corporate levies. Ah, how can I get the levies? We live with the people. No, you got the levies, I won't pay the levies. <laughs> because this levy story for colored people is like a problem. I, go to, I went to a meeting, body corporate meeting, they, <laughs> it's sad because the people trying to organize the meeting are old, all the ladies, and everyone's standing back, we're not gonna pay, we won't pay. What they doing with the money? What they doing with the money? Huh? Look here, not even fence, buildings not painted, because you're not paying, that's why nothing's happening. <laughs> and you go to the meeting and then they open in prayer, because you know, we very religious people open our meeting, but before they open, they tell you, like, we just wanna have a, a, a decision amongst us, can we switch on the lights? Do, do we agree? Okay, we just for the meeting, because they cut, we'll just fiddle with the box. And we're gonna put them off as soon as this meeting's finished. And then, and then they, 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 we open the meeting in prayer. Sister, Sister Jane, can you please pray for us? Lord, we just wanna thank you for this meeting. And we know there's only two of us here. But your word says, where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst. And we want to pray for those who are not paying for conviction, or else there will be eviction. Hallelujah. 
And the thing is, I feel sorry for these ladies, because these ladies champion the cause week after week, and people don't want to pay. Because as I was saying, we don't like to stand together. Stand together for your own flat. Find out whatever's happening, who's stealing the money, and sort it out. But contribute in the meanwhile. I won't pay till it's sorted out. No, pay. Then when it's sorted out, we can get back to your problem. Because if we don't stand together, everyone will walk over us. Governments will walk over us. Corporates will walk over us. Everyone will walk over us because we don't stand together. Like, for example, I'm from Newlands. I went to Newlands. How did Unilever manage to build a big warehouse slap bang in the middle of Newlands? And we say nothing. In the middle of Newlands, slap, they'll never do that in a suburb, in a white community. As they start digging, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? No, no, what are you guys doing? Who gave you permission to be here? White people are big on permission. <laughs> Who gave you permission? <laughs> Even like at school, like, kids are swimming. Who, why are you swimming in the pool? No, no ma'am, Mr. Matei said we can swim. Oh, colored children, why are you swimming in the pool? Oh, we can't swim here. Yo, we don't even know. <laughs> we can't swim. Uh, sorry. <laughs> white people are big on permission. Now you, you, you can't dig, you know, reassuring white guy. Hi, ma'am. My name is John, I'm from Unilever, Project Development. Yeah, don't worry, everything's under control. I don't care who you are or where you're from. I want to see who gave you permission. And, okay, I'll organize it. They must stop digging while we get that. Okay, hey, Vetu, fuck a spade down, stop it. Yeah, don't worry, we'll sort it out now, that's it's cool, so yeah, sort it out. Colored people, we let them build this, Unilever build this whole warehouse. We start speculating. We don't ask, we speculate. It's a mall. <laughs> it's a hospital. <laughs> we speculate what it is. We don't find out, we start speculating. It's a mall, I'm telling you it's a mall. It's a hospital, but there's a hospital next door. That's for government. This is a government one, that's a private one. We speculate. And then when it's finished, we don't go find out, hey, they made a flop, it doesn't look like. We go there. Alex, yeah, check if they're offering crafts. Yeah. <laughs> people will walk over us unless we stand together. And I'm angry with Unilever, because Unilever, people worry about Jay-Z and Rihanna and Luminati. You must worry about Unilever. Unilever controls what you're wearing now, what you're eating, every single thing. You, people say, oh me, I only use Omo. <laughs> Omo, surf leaves marks on the clothes. Oh, I only use Skip. Skip, Omo, Surf, Unilever makes them all. You giving your money to butter, Rama. Oh yeah, you know you eat Rama. You go to the doctor, after a while, doctor says, hey, your cholesterol's high, man. What butter you eat? Rama. Change to what? Flora. <laughs> Unilever makes Rama and they make Flora. They make the one that makes you sick and the one that makes you better. They make everything. They make Vaseline, they make Roll-On, they make Shield. Oh, I like to wear Shield. Where it comes from? Unilever. Oh, me, I like to wear Dove. Where it comes from? Unilever. And Unilever thinks we're silly because Unilever has a new, new Roll-On for 48 hour protection Dove. <laughs> Who sitting here needs protection for 48 hours? <laughs> Is there anyone in this place who needs protection for 48 hours? Just smell your neighbor, smell, smell. <laughs> Who is this thing marketed at? Is this thing like for hobos or something? <laughs> a hobo walking past a TV. Do you need 48 hours of protection, huh? <laughs> Who is this thing marketed at? And I started thinking about it, the community we come from. You know, you always see girls marching on the road in a nighty, <laughs> two o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> stocking, <laughs> teddy bear. <laughs> The teddy bear got a huge coffee stain right across his body. <laughs> Poor teddy bear. Teddy bear is saying... <laughs> teddy bear is even saying, please pardon me, please. <laughs> you go to the cherry tree, you just want to say to her, why don't you go home and have a pot? I don't need to pot. I don't need to pot. I am wearing the 48 hours of protection. I do not need to pot. I still have 10 hours. <laughs> okay, maybe five. <laughs> and the thing is like, in Durban, we live in a beautiful place. And I think, as colored people, we still haven't like made our mark. We don't, we still like minority. We still not seen. When we go to surveys and they do surveys, and I've worked in companies where they do surveys, they don't even include colored people on the ratio because they like, mm. 
they'll fall in somewhere. <laughs> we like to meet, meet, make our mark, but we need to kind of like just make our mark. Just whatever, whatever field you're in, just go out there and like do it. Because colored people, the only time we make our mark is when, we, we, when we're in a club <laughs> or when we're out in social gatherings. That's our thing. We brag about the silliest things. My child got straight hair. This I don't have to wake up 3 o'clock in the morning to brush. That's not a thing to brag about. We brag about the silliest things. Oh, my child only wears name brands. Nike, Adidas, never, never, never wear pep. Never, uh, Mr. Price, my child will get a rash. I'm sorry. <laughs> we brag about the silliest things. <laughs> we kind of need, <laughs> we need to be proud of each other when people do well. Whatever, support them, do whatever. Whenever they're doing something well, just say, yeah, well done. Even it's a message or whatever the case is. And the thing is, we live in a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city. Filled with opportunities for us. It's not like Cape Town. In Cape Town, there's millions of us. Millions of us. We can't compete if we're that side. If you're at the bottom of the food chain, they're understandable. When the job come in, three colors, 50 apply. Yeah, different story. You got a chance here, yeah, apply. And the thing now is, in Durban though, we got a beautiful city. And what we really, really need to promote more, we need to get into tourism, things like that. You know what I'm saying? We got a culture. I always tell people, kind of people got a culture. You go to our weddings, and the wedding march starts. The white camera people are always like, hey, what are you doing now? Hey, Ma, this is, <laughs> this is interesting. We've got a beautiful culture to promote, but we don't promote it enough. We need to get out and promote it. And I want to see colored kind of people in interior design and tourism. We need to market our trips to the beach. Like, you know, <laughs> our trips to the beach are epic. Because, you know, every race group goes to the beach in their own race group. You know, apartheid's finished for many years. But people still go to the beach in their own groups. Before you couldn't go to every beach, you had to go white beach, black beach, you know what I'm saying? But today you can go to any beach, but everyone still goes to their own beach. Black people all go to North Beach on New Year's Day. <laughs> all of them. And I've been twice, and I'll tell you what, I fitted in, they didn't even know I was there. <laughs> and it's so full, you can't actually swim when you're there. All you can do is jump. No swimming there, it's just jumping. There's no space to swim, you must find your spot, and when the wave comes, all you do is woo! You don't swim there, you can't swim, just jump. Next time, where are you going? Beach, for what? Swimming, no, jumping! <laughs> and Indian people, right? Indian people go to the beach, you never know if an Indian guy's going to the beach, because he put on all his clothes. He could be going to a Debs Bowl, to the mall, to Sun Coast to vote. You don't know where this man's going. He says shoes, socks, jeans, white shirt underneath, check shirt, Dodgers jacket. A cap, glasses on the forehead, white face cloth towel over the shoulder. Where you find Boss Beach? <laughs> you never know if he's going to the beach. Where's this man going? And the woman, when the woman goes swim, they swim with all their clothes. They, they go in their full sari, hey, lovely, eh? Lovely like this man. Oh, nice, eh? Lovely, oh, what like this, eh? Hey, lovely, man, eh? Hey. hey, nice and warm, yeah? What must go jumping and all that say for? Hey, lovely. Tell her mama, come swim here. Very nice, the water is here. Yeah? Lovely like this, man, hey, lovely. You must know some of them swimming at red saris, right? Ew, the red saris, the tie starts running. <laughs> the life goes, what's happening there? Did someone kill there? No, die. <laughs> and usually if you're, if, you're, if you're Indian and your father's leading the beach trip, you're going to a fishing spot. You're not going to swim. Oh, Daddy, where are we going to swim? Just play in the sand, yeah, play, yeah. Play right here, you can't even swim, play, yeah. <laughs> And then white people, right? White people like beaches with rocks. Schlanger rocks and salt rock. And they don't even go to the beach to swim. They go to lay in the sand. Just strewn across. You can go in there and steal their phones. No, I can't chase him, eh? I just got the right spot for my tan now. I'm not gonna chase it. It's only a blackberry. <laughs> Back to your owner. <laughs> And, 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 and then there's white people when they do go to the beach to swim. You, you, you guys know where's Oshaka Marine World? Beyond Oshaka Marine World, where we don't go, are white people 
in the thousands. They found their own little haven. Ski clubs and pedal ski club and surf club. They are there in the thousands swimming, swimming, enjoying themselves. And this is the thing about that beach. That beach is full of muck. And the, the municipality is pumping sewerage and you name it. And we don't mind. <laughs> as long as it's just us, we don't mind. <laughs> We're safe, yeah? No one's gonna jump on our children. We're safe. And that beach is full of blue bottles. Full, full, full of blue bottles. I took my son there, took him there, and I said, okay, boy, let's go. We're gonna go see this, this side of Durban. And we get there, and while we're there, blue bottle comes out the water, wraps around his leg, and stings him. Like he starts screaming. I don't know what to do. I've never been in a situation. I'm standing here. White lady walk past. Pee on him. <laughs> now listen to me. Listen to me. Pee on him. You listen. No. Pee on him. So I'm standing there. You want me to just? <laughs> I must just whoop out here yeah, in front of all these people, yeah. This three-year-old standing here, slightly fairer than me, by the way, screaming, ah! And I'm gonna be peeing on him. <laughs> what they gonna see? Me peeing on a screaming child, ah! Oh, and the thing about this peeing on the child when he gets stung is it's not isolated, it's widespread. After I told the story, a lady came to me and said to me, yeah, it's true, you must do that. So if you guys been solving your problems like this for years, you just didn't let us know. What, you got a rash? Bring him here, I'll talk to him <laughs> I need it's colored people, right? Colored people. This is what I'm saying, we must market. We must market our trips to the beach because every new year, colored people from all over the universe <laughs> migrate down the south to a man zim toti. <laughs> it is the great trick of colored people every New Year's Day and all the white people just go back into their flats and houses <laughs> and watch like National Geographic's. <laughs> And if you listen closely, there's even commentary in the background. Every year, hundreds and hundreds of this rare species migrate miles and miles in search of a manzem toti, the sweet waterhole. And when they arrive at the waterhole, it's not uncommon to see them fighting for the best spots at the water hole. Where y'all came from? We was here a long time. You're putting your attention now. We coming here years. You're also going to water Wonderland when we was coming here. You're coming now. You only want to come find by us now. No, no, we coming here years. You almost go water Wonderland. Closed, yeah. Go, go camp there, go camp in the car, Papa San Go there. We coming here years. This is our spot. See that rock there? What's written there? Eh? I was yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am I. Who are you? <laughs> and the thing about, about Amanzam Toti, right? A lot of the older folk will notice is that Amanzam Toti had the highest shark attack rate in South Africa at one point in time. Shark attacks happened in Toti. And that's where colored people chose to go swim. <laughs> How dangerous are we? Shark who? Shark where? He knows me. He knows me. He don't know me, man. I'm from the wait. He's a hey, What shark? I'm not bang out no shark yet. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the thing, right? Since we are going to a manzam toti, shark attacks have stopped. <laughs> True story. I'm not even making up. Shark attacks have stopped. Shark attacks no more happen in a manzam toti. Even the sharks are bang. <laughs> Sharks vying swim. Were you vying toti? Ah, hi, brain nose dance. Ah! Never I was shark with it. Hey, white meat in a water. <laughs> shark attacks have stopped. We are not getting bitten by sharks. We have cleaned up toti beach by just being there. And the thing about us though is that if it ever have to happen that a colored person had to be bitten by a shark at toti, it would be quite a thing because we got a strange philosophy for swimming. Anyone else will tell you you're gonna swim? Two hours, two hours, you must wait two hours, then you go swim. Not us, we eat, drink, 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 drink. 
carry the bottle down to the beach, drink, drink, last, last, throw the bottle on the sand, go swim, drunk. If a shark must rock up there while we're swimming the New Year's Day, the shark will be then, 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 then. I can smell Johnny Walker, then, then, then. If a shark must chow a brain on New Year's Day, and mom's some toti, that shark come there, chow a brain, ah, hop. Shark leave there. You know how drunk that shark will leave there? That shark will swim away, ding, 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 ding. And the shark says, Sharky, what kind? Where you come from? Eggs. I tried a brain, oh, I'm tananazic. Tananazic. I love the trucks. I love it. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you for supporting the show, being a part of the show. Uh, I just want you to think about something before you go. You know, today, this year uh, was a sad year for my family, for many of your families, because somebody who was a part of our family died. Whitney Houston, in the beginning of the year. Whitney Houston was an idol to most of us. I don't know why you find that funny. It's true, she was an idol. She was a part of all our families. Our aunties, our mothers, whenever my sister grew up listening to Whitney Houston, right? And it was very really sad when she died. But for some reason, all the news stations all over the world had the same idea when she died of how to cover her death. They're going to go out into the streets and they're going to find the people that, that loved and listened to her music and ask them, what did you think of Whitney Houston? And what was her favorite song? They did this everywhere. They were in China asking people in the streets, their famous singer Whitney Houston has died. How do you feel? Oh, she was discontinued. Oh. Oh. We love Whitney Houston. We love Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. Oh. Every Friday we sing Whitney Houston karaoke. Oh. What was your favorite Whitney Houston song? Ah. I believe in children of future. Teach them well. Let them lead the way. No. Children can't lead way. <laughs> Not in China. Who's gonna make Nikes? No. <laughs> they were in Russia asking people in the streets of Russia. The American singer Whitney Houston has died. How do you feel? We don't like American. <laughs> but we like Whitney. But American is very stupid. We go to space, we have trouble. We found naval base. American go to space, you have trouble? You phone Whitney. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Very stupid. What was your favorite Whitney Houston song? I believe children of future teach well that lead way. Can you sing it? I just did. <laughs> and in South Africa, they did exactly the same thing. South Africa, they went out. And we know Whitney Houston's music lived with colored people, it lived with Indian people a lot, lived with black people. But you have to ask everyone, so they even ask white people. What news does die? Tell us, how does it feel? She died, eh? <laughs> oh my gosh, oh ma. <laughs> ma, where? did you hear? <laughs> she died. Huh? Who died? Who, who, who is it again? <laughs> who, who, Whitney? Houston, yeah, Whitney Houston. Oh, she's a lovely black girl, eh? Oh, yeah. Shame, man, it's a pity. It's the drugs, though, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Shame. What's that? You want me to sing <laughs> on TV? I'm all, I don't even do my ear. <laughs> what? Whitney Houston, oh ma, favorite Whitney Houston song, okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Imagine this. <laughs> right. Uh, heal the world. Make it a better place. No? No? <laughs> no? She doesn't sing that. <laughs> Why are you stopping me? <laughs> She doesn't sing that, huh? Who, who does? <laughs> Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, but he also died. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing though, right, in South Africa, the music lived mostly amongst black people. And you know, black people are very emotional when they show how they love them. They ask black people, Whitney Houston's died. Tell us, how do you feel? Ooh. Even 
my stomach is just like, you know, it's, it's just like turning, like even the, eh, whoo. I even phone my boss, I tell boss, I'm not coming to work. For someone in my family die, I'm, whoo, I can't go. Whoo, Whitney, how much, like Whitney, how shame. The guy's like, what was your favorite? Can you sing your favorite Whitney Houston song? Ooh, ooh, eh? <laughs> what, you want me to sing? <laughs> On TV? Okay, oh my, okay, right, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, no, you stand there, they never sing. Okay, ooh, <laughs> right, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Must dance first, ooh. I wanna dance in your body. I wanna feel like heat in your body. Yeah, I wanna dance in your body. And your body is loving me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.